Ich habe Hilfe. Hi. No more time. Okay, the agenda, the things I'm going to discuss with you today. A bit of background and basics as to what is League of Beers, what is craft beer. Hopefully you all love and drink craft beer. Should be more craft beer here. Um, then what I'm going to is a bit of a League of Beers timeline, a little bit of our story. So hopefully that will have some relevance for you. I think part of the point of us chatting here tonight is for you to hopefully learn a bit from the mistakes we've made. Um, then off, off that I'm going to give a couple of my learnings just to end off. A bit manual, the remote doesn't work on this thing. I'm the remote. Okay, so what is craft beer? Question I get very often. Small, independent, traditional. So remember those three things if you want to. Um, small, as in the volume produced on a monthly basis, falls into a category that's kind of classified as small. Okay, this is a an international classification. If you were to take Jack Black, they do have Jack Black here, luckily. If you were to take Jack Black who is at the moment the biggest producer of craft beer in the country, and you multiply their monthly output by 100, they would be at the limit of what craft beer is. So don't worry. You can, all the haters out there who say Ad Union or Jack Black, all big and mainstream, are not. <laughs> there are a lot, there's a long way to go in this country especially. Independent, not owned by a public company, not owned by a major crop, by a major brewing company, but they are generally public companies. Um, and traditional. Now traditional is the most important one for me. The best possible ingredients is really what traditionalists tell you. No, no cheap additives, no cheap adjuncts, no rice, no corn, nothing to take away from the flavor. The, the ingredients will be the traditional beer ingredients, water, yeasts, barley and hops. But also they'll try different ingredients because the creative spirit of craft beer is so important. They wanna, they'll make the beers more expensive to make to give you a better experience. Why drink craft? Excuse the long list, but there's so many reasons to drink craft beer. It's tastier, it's healthier, has fewer calories, more diverse and interesting, pairs better with food, supports the little guy, and at the same time, you're fighting the man. It's brewed with passion. With passion. <laughs> it works on so many levels. <laughs> um, uh, passion that can evoke romance and stories, which is very important to me as a person. It's handcrafted, high quality. You get the second bit there? No. <laughs> it's handcrafted with high quality, better ingredients. Uh, you get to think while you drink, not drink while you drive. I say think while you drink because the product, there's so much that goes into creating a craft beer that when you drink one of those things, you can't help but you, you see this beer there sniffing their beer and thinking about what hops they put into this beer and what yeast. And you, you, you find you get into that kind of swing of things because so much has gone into making the product. It's a crafted product. It's creative, interesting, and inspiring. What or who is the League of Beers? Okay. So we had a nice photo shoot. Um, you can see there's myself, I'm Rob, that's Nzeka and Moni. We also have Troy over there, it's also part of League of Beers. Hey Troy, um, pay me to do that. Um, what's, what we are is we are at the forefront of the craft beer revolution. We'd like to think we're pretty close to the forefront of the e-commerce revolution, although a couple of guys have beat us to it, but very much in craft beer. Our big thing is to build this industry, is to try and take craft beer further and do our damnedest to get craft beer to people and to educate people about craft beer. We're also the link. What we do is, I like to do this with my hands, we're the, the link between the, the, the passion of beer lovers and the passion of beer creators and we like to bring them together. My, me, myself, I've got a passion for the business of crafted consumer products that can bring people together. There's multiple meanings inside that. If you want to get to know the psyche of me, which I can't imagine why, it's in there. <laughs> this, um, my current business partners, we argue a lot about this. What is the one-line description of League of Beers? We haven't quite got it down pat yet, but it's no ordinary beer store was the original thing we came up with. Extraordinary beers for the extraordinary beer drinker community of craft beer aficionados, the broadest selection of craft beer in South Africa, all available online, delivered anywhere in SA, and the authority of craft beer. But that probably won't interest you right now. Our timeline, our little story so far. So, the idea hatched in about November 2011. I was sitting with a buddy drinking some coffee, interestingly enough, um, and he said, water would be good right now. Um, and he said, such a pity here eh, that you can't get good craft beer stuff anywhere in South Africa. And just this light bulb went off. I was like, yes, I love beer, I'm going to do that. 
Um, in uh, January 2012, I met Marnie. Um, Marnie, interestingly enough, his name is Marnie and Nzeko. It's Nzeko who joined in June 2012. On our about page, any of you have ever looked on our about page, I might have fixed it by now, but I was bored one day, typing the about page, knowing if I build it, no one's going to come, and I wrote that I'm Rob and Zeka and Marnie, we created League of Beers. If you want to contact us, just give us a shout. But by the way, Marnie prefers to be referred to as Hadamanus Theodorus Bookhit, of his full name. Two months down the line, we start getting this influx of emails. Hi Rob and Zeka and Hadamanus Theodorus Bookhit. <laughs> he claims he's still going to get me back about that one. <laughs> um, the design and the website cost us about 20,000 Rand. And really, that 20,000 was in the pretty design that you see there. We used WooThemes, WooCommerce, amazing product. Without it, we wouldn't have been able to launch an e-commerce business, all right? Very, very straightforward. It couldn't have been easier. I mean, that's what's great about where we are these days. The boxes, very expensive boxes. We bought our first batch of boxes for about 20,000 Rand. They are such high quality boxes, that got us about five boxes. <laughs> um, after that, we were ready to go. It was born in August 2012. Two other things about timeline I wanted to mention. Should have put it up here, then I'd remember. I'm not good at memory things if you drink beer. Um, but this, this marks a milestone for me, my, my first milestone. Because you know when you, when you dream of starting a business, you dream of telling people about your successful business one day. So thank you for having me here today. This is my little opportunity to do that. Um, phase one, crickets. Okay? August, to, August to November 2012, we, we logged up our first 100 customers, didn't make much money. We went to three festivals, lost a lot of money at those festivals. And it basically was a hobby business. I spent about four hours a week on the business, which I was very proud of, but I made no money out of those four hours a week. So Tim Ferriss would have been marginally impressed, but I wasn't sitting on an island back at his book. Then the big time suddenly happened. We suddenly cottoned on that, hey, wait a second, this thing is a great gift. Females are shopping online much more than men. You can see us holding up our great gift over there. Um, and all of a sudden, we started. We realized we had a business. People were buying these things en masse, and it was, it was keeping us busy. We, we employed people. It was, it was nuts. Um, we weren't ready for it. I mean, we realized that there was big demand for gift, there was big demand for crop, and people were really interested in buying these things. So we started, in terms of custom profiling, Joburg loved it. Cape Town was on it, but Joburg really took to it. Um, when we realized we had this real business, we also realized that I was about to lose my day job because I was spending all my time on this stuff. And I was fired. <laughs> I'm not sure what that applause is about. <laughs> my mom's still not impressed. Um, I decided to go full time to try and build systems. I'm not a tech person, I'm not a systems person. Um, I enjoy talking and drinking beer. Um, we started hiring people, we tried to scale. Um, these were the tough times. Um, for the last six months of my life, um, I spent a bit of money on League of Beers, I earned not a cent. It was very tough because we were just paying for ourselves to exist. Um, I realized that there was a business and it could scale, but we needed to either take partnership or we needed investment. Something needed to happen. So we spoke to lots of people and I knew it wasn't. We could have easily looked for, I don't want to offend anybody, a big mass e-commerce store, we could have joined up with someone like that and would have sold a lot of our logistical problems. But what we really had is we needed customer service, customer service is key, um, and we needed the logistics to be able to do this because it's a physical, big, hard, heavy product. But I wanted to join, I wanted to partner up with people who shared our, our heart for customer service and for product. Enter Yappyshare. So, you are the first people to hear the announcement that we have joined forces with Yappyshare. Um, so as I said, they entered the Yappies. The point of entering the yuppies is we wanted to, according to Porter's five forces, build a little moat around us by understanding the industry a lot better. What we needed is, as I say, partners who understood what we understood and were able to give us that customer support. So now we've got this nice, well-designed WordPress front, but we've got the yuppie power behind us. With their big warehouse, I don't know if any of you have done that tour, but they're pretty jacked, they've got great customer service, great systems, and it's enabled us to now get to the, the point where we can really scale and really take on this industry. And our goal, is to be the number one sales and marketing channel for all the craft brewers. And now it's actually possible. So it was a great moment in my life that I know I can actually help these guys get their businesses up. We do, we do some pretty bizarre things as well. One of the ways we like to differentiate ourselves is that we actually brew. And um, myself and Troy and Mark at the back there have a brewed beer at the moment. It'll be launching next week, Thursday. So get onto our newsletter really quickly if you want to get it. We, brew, we brewed, I think, 800 bottles. We think it's going to be the best beer ever brewed in South Africa so far. You're going to have to taste it to find out for yourself. 
Um, we also did the border make with Hudson's doing un un uh, unusual stuff, bringing the beer from the States, trying to differentiate ourselves. Anyway, next tricks, online and woo again. So through learning about League of Beers, I realized that it's actually, it's not this long dream to become an entrepreneur and launch an e-commerce business. And bugger this, I'm starting a new business next, by the end of next month, you'll see the next version of League of something else. It won't be a League, but we, it's, just, it's just such a, an obvious thing to do. It's such a good industry to be involved in at this point in time. My passion being craft beer, so that'll be the full-time effort, but why not do a little bit more? And thanks to WooCommerce, for a pun there, they didn't pay me for that. We can just do it. Alright, so to end off some learnings, how are we looking? Good time-wise, five minutes. Lean startups, right? The, the keys to a lean startup is that you can be an entrepreneur, you can be a business. You have to manage that business. It's not a magical ability. All this stuff about entrepreneurs being these people with flair and special powers, and it's complete nonsense. It's just a management thing that people don't know about managing really. You need a minimum viable product. This is what I'm, I'm not telling you how to run a business. This is what I've learned. A minimum viable product is part of the lean startup. So it was really straightforward for us. We paid 40,000 rands. Not 5,000 Rand, unfortunately, but 40,000 Rand we thought it was worthwhile going for. And we had a product up there we could sell, and we could test, and we could iterate, and we could build, measure, learn, build, measure, learn, build, measure, learn, and continually improve what we do. Um, and we use innovation accounting, which is we measure how many customers are signing up, how many customers are loving our product, how many customers are referring our product, how many customers are coming back. That's the only stuff we really worry about. And whatever makes more of that happen, we just do more. It's pretty straightforward. So other lean startup companies, Zappos, Lean Startup Company, um, Obama's original campaign followed all the Lean Startup principles. Um, WooCommerce enables you to be a Lean Startup, and something I figured out, Dollar Shave Club, I'm sure you guys have seen the video. Has anybody else spotted the book Lean Startup inside the video? I did. <laughs> That's why it's there. <laughs> so my learnings about starting up, because that is in essence what we, I think we've done right. People always used to tell me, you must find your passion, you must find what you love, and that's so intimidating. I didn't know what I loved, I didn't know what my passion was, it was scary, and I didn't do anything. So I just thought, what is fun? Craft beer is fun, well, there we go, I'll spend time doing that. Um, I looked at craft beer and I thought, what's missing, what's wrong, what's needed? I realized that the successful brewers, um, wasn't necessary that they had a good product, the big brewing companies had sales, and they had marketing, and they had logistics. So I thought, well, that's missing for the craft brewers, maybe we can give them that. Um, how much is needed? Luckily I knew the volumes from being in the industry, a lot was needed. Will someone pay enough? <laughs> Who's not going to pay money for craft beer? He'll pay a lot of money for craft beer, luckily. Um, how many of these people are there out there? Also, I think there are quite a lot of people liking craft beer and luckily it's a way of going quite quickly. What is the easiest, cheapest, first, quickest step that you can take? So, as opposed to brewing and building and taking your time, thinking about stuff forever, how can we start today? Can it scale? And how suitable is it to what you're capable of doing? So if I needed to build an e-commerce company, <laughs> it would never have happened. I couldn't have built a website. Um, but I was able to talk to people about beer. Um, who can help? I, for me, partnerships were key. Without Marlene and Zeka, we wouldn't have been where we were. With, without Troy coming on board, we wouldn't have been where we were. Without Yapishek, we wouldn't be able to get to the next level. So I've given off <laughs> shares and equity along the way, but it's helped us get further because we've been able to do it with other people who've helped us move along. Um, what's taking you so long? So that's my, my next question. So those of you who are here wanting to be inspired about starting a business, don't wait, just do it. And if it fails, <laughs> failure is cool as well. That was my little thing I was going to tell you. I started, <laughs> first of all, I started a property company where I took all my friends' money. We didn't buy anything. Uh, <laughs> then I started, luckily I gave it back. Um, then I started a company, I'm not one of those dudes. Then I started a company where um, I sold vertical jumping programs. So programs to make you better at basketball. Because I thought niche is the way to go. <laughs> what a stupid idea. <laughs> I, to date, sold none of those. Um, but I also started about two years ago. You might have seen us at the Hard Bay Market flog flogging those stupid t-shirts that you could write on and live balls. Well, we did that as well, it's a bad idea, so you learn a lot from failure, and all of those things we started them very quickly and easily, and luckily I think we found something a little bit better with the League of Deaths. Um, I think that is where I come to an end, so thank you, and uh, it's time for your questions. Cheers. Um, is that a question? Another one? 
Yes, I'm, of course. Um, another question from Corvus. What was your worst brew ever? Worst brew that I've had? Yeah. Um, about last weekend, there was a competition <laughs> at a triggerfish, and myself and the guys from Beer Guevara and Troy thought we'd show off our brewing skills. We buggered up the timing completely. Um, we, and we still thought we'd submit the beer just in case, which was a very bad idea. And we had, of all the 20 beers that were submitted, I think we had the 19th best beer. <laughs> On that record, I'm hoping for second best presentation tonight. <laughs> it's all about realistic goals. Um, cool. Anyone else? Um, you're not going to like this question. How much uh, can you tell us about the deal with Yappy Chef? Uh, yeah, um, they have taken on a significant demand to ask that. No, no, okay. no. Startup scene, you've got to know. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, the, it, they've taken on a significant share in the company in exchange for our ability to use everything. So I had access to the entire Yappy Chef staff, everything like that. But they wanted a fair chunk for it, and they gave us money for that fair chunk. So I hope that I'm not going to go into the specific details. If not, <laughs> well done. Good work. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Uh, you in the back, Mark. Also Mark. Um, are they going to be doing more deliveries as well? Is that something you have to sort out yourself? Sorry. Are they going to be so sorting out your deliveries, or you need to do that yourself? Well, so we're going to station them. Um, we happen to use the same courier. Um, and Andrew was a kind of a mentor to me from the early days, so I was like, what do you guys do? I was like, okay, cool, I'll do that. You know, just kind of copy the it. Um, and so that's also partly why our company's linked up quite well. Um, but they use Burko, and we use Burko, and now our beers are going to be stocked there, so we'll get slightly better rates with Burko, so we'll pass those prices on to you, the customer. <laughs> awesome. Uh, sure. Are there any obstacles that uh, we found in regards to the local or yeah, definitely. Um, which is nice because it means people can't copy you as easily. Um, first obstacle is when everyone I knew said, that's a stupid business, you're not going to make any money. <laughs> um, but then after that, yeah, getting a liquor license is very difficult in this country. Um, it's very difficult to get a brewer's license. All that stuff is a pain. What we discovered is that the best possible license is a, excuse me, a liquor store license, like a retailer. So, Marnie, who I partnered with in the beginning, some of you might have recognized him if you're craft beer drinkers, he owns a little craft beer liquor store. And so, by partnering up with him, and Liga Beer's been an affiliate of Marnie's company, we, could, we were completely legal to sell them in the ways that we needed to. The IP Chef have received one of those licenses themselves, and part of the delay in our deal was waiting for them to get that license. And yeah, that's, you, you can't sell beer illegally or alcohol illegally in this country. And, uh, so, people that want to sell food, they're also required to license. Yeah, yeah. We, so our license, we can sell to people who are unlicensed, but we can't buy from someone who's unlicensed. So you can be, uh, initially I had this great idea that we'd launch home, home brewers, but until that home brewer has a license, I'm not touching it. Yeah. Um, um, sorry, we're over there first, and then. Um, I got told once, uh, Union Brewer in Germany, because SAB controlled all the prices for hops and the other brewers. Is there any truth to that? A little bit, yeah. Um, let me just think what I can explain there. So, all pale malt, pale malt is the base malt that you use for brewing just about any beer. It's the majority. The, the, okay, so the, the main ingredient you use in beer, water. Um, the next ingredient would be malt, and that would be pale malt. SAB have all the pale malt. They have a lot of the hops. Um, and you do have to accept their prices, which aren't bad. Um, I think the thing is also it's a certain type of beer they wanted to brew, and when they started, Nobody in the country could brew that type of beer. Now it's a different story, but they wanted to source that exact... These guys are all about high quality product, and it was a very specific product they wanted they could only get in Germany at that time. So that's the main reason, it's the type of product that they wanted to be selling. Um, good, it's, it's, I like that you bring that up. Um, you get a lot of haters of Ann Union and Jack Black these days. Um, people say Jack Black's all over the place. Um, they're the forefront of the craft beer revolution. They, they make new drink craft beer and union. If it wasn't for them, people wouldn't have realized how cool beer can be. And they are craft beers. They are craft brewed. They, they fit all the rules. Go ahead. So, why is IPA the nice hobby IPA so scarce? That's a great question. Um, that case over there is yours, right next to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, if you bother, they'll come. There's, there's a bit of truth to people that they'll come, right? There were no IPAs in this country, okay? So luckily the dudes from Triggerfish commercially put out an IPA, so people taste it. They're like, 
that's terrible. And then they tasted some more and they realized, that's ah, okay. And then Devil's Peak came out in the IPA. People were like, they're really, they were used to those trigger fish ones. They were like, well, that's, in my opinion, even better. And uh, then it's just how the market grows. So we needed to bring the product and the market needed to get used to it. What's good about Cape Town is the palate is so advanced into the foodie culture that people are experimental in their palates and they're more likely to try things like that. So there'll be more IPAs. In fact, the beer that we brew that's coming out next week is an IPA. <laughs> nice. Thanks. Um, we have one. Okay, cool. No more questions. We, we got five minutes. We, yeah. No? Yes. How have you benefited from it? Like, tell us that kind of... Okay, cool. Um, there would be no League of Beers without WordPress or WooCommerce, as, to put it simply. Yeah. Um, I, I have built an HTML website uh, to sell basketball programs. <laughs> 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 that didn't work. <laughs> um, what it, it's, it gave us the full backend functionality, the ability to bring people on board and to show them how to use it. It's so user-friendly, so easy. Untech person like myself can use it. So the, the, the ability to put up a website, WordPress gave us that, and WooCommerce gave us the ability to actually sell and sell properly. And credibility, because it looks a lot better than HTML homemade websites. Yeah. Um, cool. Did you look at anything else when you were... When you, uh, you must have been doing your homework when you're looking for a site to build. Yeah, um, yeah it's, this is, I, I got a lot of recommendations and that, that was recommended to me quite a bit. Um, I also, I knew of Mark, it was the same way, like I, I used RSA Web because of other Mark. I was like, oh, I don't know, use RSA Web. But, um, the, I, I was highly thinking about you going using, doing a Jimla site or something like that, but based on my skills and what would be needed, I thought this is going to be the the easiest, dumbest approach for me to get started with it. So that was, didn't do massive amounts of shopping. I'm, I'm big on advice. That helps. I should be better shopping around. Just don't. Cool. Other breweries you would go to or recommend? Um, okay, this, you, you have to, have to get to CBC. It's freaking incredible. Um, CBC is on Spice Root, which is next to Fairview. Um, so go to, make a whole day of it, go, go to Fairview, go to Spice Street. Now on Spice Street they've got a, a chocolatier, they, they make plum kuchen, I can pronounce it properly, the, the German pizzas, they've got grappa, they've got coffee, the wine obviously, and they've got this great brewery with the guy who used to brew for Paulana, uh, Wolfgang, now brews at CBC, so above all else go there. On the way there you've got Wild Clover, and then when you go through Stenemars, then you've got Stenemars as well, so off the top of my head I'd say go there. Darling is building a new brewery in Darling, so that's going to be cool, cool to see. Triggerfish is good to check out. Um, and then also, what's very nice is Natal. Um, on one road are three awesome breweries. So Stan Even, Robson's, and Pulls, all on the, the, the Thousand Hills Road. It's like a little brewing area, so those are the ones I could recommend. Uh, otherwise, Tweet Me will have a Tweet Me conversation. And Devil's Peak. Devil's Peak. Yes, uh, September. Devil's Peak will be up and running the observatory in probably December, the Woodstock Brewery. So Woodstock is going to become quite a brewing hub itself. There'll be probably three breweries inside of Woodstock, so definitely check those out. Yeah, with the uh, craft beer, obviously the quality of the beer is very important, but how important is the actual story behind the beer? You know, like the marketing and the label and the branding? CBC, or? I went to CBC and it was very clinical and I felt like everything had been imported and like the best of this and we're going to get that down from there to make it. I was a little bit disappointed that there wasn't more, I don't know, more craft, more story behind the label. So, um, what you should maybe do, oh, Lakeside was a good uh, Valley Brewery. Um, so, well, what's very good to consider is um, I was taking, when we were developing the Boilermaker, I took the guys from Hudson's and I said, let's check out a couple of breweries and show you what the breweries are like, who can do what. So, we ended up, we brewed out of Valley and Norton, okay, it was, the, it was the right mix for us, okay. We first went to Wild Clover, which is like, the guy's got buckets and like a flame and hand and he's hand brewed. Um, then you've got CBC up the road, which is worlds apart, and you've got Stenemara, which is kind of in between. I see a lot of value in CBC. I can't brew batches yet at CBC because they're just too massive scale that I can't pay up front for 9,000 liters of beer. Um, there's a, a big factor that's going to come in craft beer. It's, it's nice that it's handmade, and I, and I agree with you, that's an important factor. But for me, as a consumer, I rather want to get a consistently good beer. I want it to be a creatively well-brewed, um, excellent beer that, that, that was brewed with passion. But I want to know that it's going to be really the same each time. There's not going to be some kind of infection. When you're brewing and it's on such a rudimentary cell, your risk of that a lot higher. Um, so 
there's a lot of value to brewing on a CBC scale. A lot of guys will go in that kind of direction. But I, I get what you mean. It doesn't feel like a little craft place, even though technically it's craft. It's not, the dudes aren't using their hand, they're, they're using their hand to press the buttons. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's weird. I mean, the, the beers are, are delicious. They make excellent beers. The beers are good. I suppose it's common consistency again. The thing is, you must look at the, the, the volume that, because craft beer is so popular, they are selling a ton of beer and they're brewing a lot of Jack Black as well. Yeah. Um, and if you're going to be brewing that much at that scale, you can't afford to make a mess up, so it's, it's kind of it's the way to go about it. But there's nothing wrong with the small guys, especially a lot of what happens is in the States is what happened. Guys go from home brewer to step past home brewer, it's pretty much still a home brewing system. Everybody still aspires to a CBC level. But it's it's nice to hang out with the guys like Umpy and Wild Clover and you can actually kind of put your hand on his pot, I don't think, you know? And his pot belly as well. <laughs> cool, just one more question if there's anyone. Not at all. Cool.